Hello everyone, my name is Chloe and today I am here with a brand new video. Welcome to Brunette Bibliophile where I post bookish videos and writing content. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that subscribe button so you can stick around and see what else I have to share. Today I am here to talk about my November reading wrap up. So I read a total of 12 items during the month of November and I started off the month really strong for the first half and then kind of the last week I fell into like a weird reading mood. It wasn't really a slump but I it took me a while to find things that I wanted to read. So we're gonna go ahead and get started talking about all of these items and let's just jump right into the first book. So the first book I completed was Isn't It Bromantic by Lissa K. Adams. This is the fourth book in the Bromance Book Club series and this one is following the Russian. Now the Russian has been one of my favorite side characters in the previous three books so I was so excited for him to get his own book and while this book had a lot of different elements as far as the plot and the subplots are concerned it ended up working together and I gave it five stars. The audiobook is amazing because the same narrator has done all the other books and he specifically does a Russian accent when the Russian is talking in the previous book so I was really hoping he would do that in this one and he does and I just love it. I am so glad that I was able to pick up this book and there is going to be another book. Um, it doesn't have a title or a synopsis yet but I am very excited to see how far this series can go because there are so many characters in this friend group that they can follow. Next I picked up a reread and that was Cress by Marissa Meyer. I am slowly continuing my reread of the Lunar Chronicles and this was the next one on my list. This is one of the bigger books in the series but I did see find that I was able to still get through it pretty quickly because it is a series that I love and a book that I've read before. And this one is a Rapunzel retelling but we also still have the elements of the previous characters that we met in the other two books. And I gave this one five stars. It is my favorite series and I'm so pumped to be rereading it for the first time since I originally read it because it has been like seven years since I read this book the first time. So next I started getting through my backlist book of the month picks and I read The Heart Principle by Helen Huang. This is the third book in the Kiss Quotient series and we are following Quan who we met in the first book and then a new character that we're just now meeting in this book. So I kind of went into this blind and I didn't really know what I was expecting and while this book does look very happy on the outside it actually is kind of dark and it gets dark for the last I'd say three hours of the audiobook. There are trigger warnings for depression, loss of a parent, and suicidal thoughts and actions and it got very dark towards the end but it did end up on a lighter note when finishing it up. The main character is diagnosed with uh, autism at a later age and there's a lot of disbelief with uh, family members, specifically her sister, and there's a lot of back and forth and frankly I think her sister is an asshole but you know that's besides the point. I know this book was a long time coming so I'm really glad that I finally got to read it and I gave it four stars. Next I picked up a short story and that is The Phantom of Linkshire Manor by Marissa Meyer. This is a short story you received as a pre-order incentive for Gilded and it's only about 50 pages so I picked it up one night and it is kind of like a little spooky, a little haunting, from the synopsis it kind of sounded like it was going to be a Frankenstein retelling but that's not what it is at all. It does follow a young woman doctor as she is left at this manor to care for the the head of the household and understand his mysterious illness. I thought it was a nice little story to read. It took me like an hour um, and I gave it four stars. Next I picked up a book that I can't believe I waited so long to pick this up and it is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. I read this with Desiree from Libri Labra and wow this is one of my favorite books of all time now. It's definitely going to end up on my favorites of 2021 but on my favorites of all time is like the more important one. So this is Allie Hazelwood's debut and it follows two scientists. One is a grad student and one is a professor at Stanford. It is the fake dating trope and one day our main character Olive uh, randomly kisses Adam and they have to be fake dating now. Now this is 100% the 
Raylo fan fiction. For those of you who don't know, Raylo is Rey and Kylo from Star Wars, and this book is made 1,000 times better if you picture Adam as Adam Driver. Again, 1,000 times better. I love this book so much that I can't stop thinking about it. After I finished it like weeks ago and I can't stop thinking about it. And I bought a second copy and I'm going to reread it and annotate it. This book is fucking fantastic. Five stars all around. Allie Hazelwood has instantly become an auto buy author for me. Next I read Gilded by Marissa Meyer. Couple notes with this book. This was the Booktube Chicks book club pick for the month of November and I was also gifted an e-arc from the publisher via NetGalley, so thank you to the publisher for that. This is Marissa Meyer's Return to Fairy Tales, and I'm not going to talk too much about it because we did do a whole live show for this book for Book Club, and I'll link it in the description below. I ended up giving this five stars. For a bit I was bouncing between a four and a half and a five, but I ended up on a five because as I thought about it I realized there weren't many things, if any, that I disliked about this book. I ended up flying through it and listening to the audiobook on my drive up and my drive down from Charleston for Y'all Fest, so I got a good chunk of it done just while on the road. And despite this being a Marissa Meyer book, I felt like it had a different vibe from other books that she's written before, especially because The Lunar Chronicles is so fresh in my mind right now from a reread. Honestly, this book just shows that Marissa Meyer can easily flow between genres, even if it's all under the retelling umbrella. She can flow between the sci-fi aspects of the Lunar Chronicles and the dark fantasy elements of Gilded, and I am just loving it. Next I read Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. This is just a cute little rom-com that I got for my birthday, so I decided to randomly pick it up when I needed an audiobook. This is following Blair, who owns a cupcake and booze shop. She's right next to like a college bar and her and the owner of the college bar kind of butt heads and it's an enemies to friendship to lovers trope. I don't have too much to say about it. It was cute. It was just another rom-com in my opinion, um, but I gave it four stars and I am still going to pick up other things from Helena Hunting. Next I read The Rise of Flynn Rider by Jen Kalanita. This is a new middle grade series from her following Disney heroes as kids and specifically it follows Disney male heroes. This one just follows Flynn as a child and kind of where he is before he meets Rapunzel in the movie, and I thought there were some connections with the movie which I thought were great, and we got more of an inside look at Flynn as a 12 year old. I don't have too much to say about it, but I did give it four stars and I look forward to seeing the rest of the books in the series. So this is kind of where my weird reading mood started, and um, I just had to find an audiobook to listen to, so I ended up listening to Without Merit by Colleen Hoover, and this is probably one of the weirdest Colleen Hoover books I've ever read, and I fully believe that she was in a mood when she wrote it, because it's just so weird. As I progressed through the book there were a lot of more serious topics that were uncovered, beneath all the weirdness, so there are trigger warnings for attempted suicide, suicidal thoughts, underage drinking that led to suicidal thoughts, and depression. I don't really know how to explain this book, it's just... it's just weird before it gets to all the deeper stuff at the bottom. That being said, it wasn't bad, I did enjoy it despite all its quirkiness that was very confusing at times, and I gave it four stars. So the next three books that I picked up were children's books that I received ebooks in exchange for an honest review. So the first two books I read were by Alan Matkovic, and I read Tom's Special Thanksgiving Day and then The Magic House, The Amazing Adventures of Alexander and Sophia. I received two ebook copies of these in exchange for honest reviews, so first we're going to talk about Tom's Special Thanksgiving Day. So this is a children's book that follows Tom who is a turkey and he wakes up and he realizes that it is Thanksgiving and he is terrified because people eat turkey on Thanksgiving. It was very timely considering I read it a couple of days before Thanksgiving, so I thought it was perfect to read. And overall I thought it was a cute and quirky book. It is set on a farm and I think children would really enjoy it and it would be something that is timely to read around the Thanksgiving fall holiday. And next we'll talk about The Magic House. This is a short little book following Alexander and Sophia 
who go exploring one day and from the beach they can see this house that is just very colorful and very magical looking so they decide they want to explore and when they go up they find that it has no doors and no windows and they find a magical way to get in. This one is mostly just following Alexander and Sophia throughout the house and what they find and all these different quirky elements and is really just having an adventure for a day. I thought both of these books would be cute for kids. They're probably more of like an elementary age like kindergarten or first grade where they could potentially read it themselves or if it had a younger child you could read it to them. But it is a lot of words so you just have to keep that in mind as far as like attention span and patience. So the next children's book that I'm going to review really quick is called The Elephant of Surprise by Stuart Gray. Now this one is not on Goodreads that I could find and I'll try and put a cover up here if I can find it. But this book is about how children can hear a word and think it's something else when really it's another thing. So The Elephant of Surprise is a play on the element of surprise. So this book is following all these different scenes where it's like the elephant of this, the elephant of that, because they think it's the elephant of surprise instead of the element of surprise. Now one thing I would like to say about this book that is not going to affect my review is that I did read a version that does not have pictures in it yet. The PDF I had was only text. So I think if I read a version that had all the pictures and all the different elements in it, I think it would be a really, really fun read. But purely based off of the words and the pictures that I had to think of in my mind, I think it would be cute once it's all laid out and would be like a fun little quirky read for kids. That being said, I would have to see it with all the pictures before I do like a full on review. But from what I read with the text, I think it is going to be cute. The last book I finished last night is Bridgerton The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julia Quinn. This is the second book in the Bridgerton books and this is following Anthony and it's also going to be the main focal point of season two. I also happened to read this during my weird funky reading mood so I really enjoyed it but it just took me forever to read it. I just think reading the Regency romance is so fun and when I think about the fun colorful aspects that the TV show brought in and I apply it to the book it's just amazing and honestly it's just holding me over until season two. I gave this one four stars. So those are all of the books that I completed during the month of November. The one book that I'm still currently reading and hopefully going to get done before the end of November is How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by K.M. Jackson. This is just the dust jacket because I'm trying to finish the book. This is weird and kind of interesting. I don't have a full opinion on it yet but I don't know. We'll see. So that is all I have for this video today and all of the books that I read during the month of November. Let me know in the comments below what you read during the month of November or if you picked up any of these and what your thoughts were. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed it. As always, if you like what you see here, please go ahead and click subscribe. I post new videos every week, so click subscribe so you can be updated for when I post those. Thank you all so much. I'll see you in my next one. Bye! In the darkness, I don't feel so cold.